A £100,000 salary is not enough to live in the UK anymore, according to the Gen Z population. In fact, some of them say that £200,000 is not enough. So, in this video, I'm going to break down a £100,000 salary, show you what life would be like on that salary, and if Gen Z actually have a point after running some numbers. And stick around to the end of the video because I'm going to show you using live examples how to reach a £100,000 salary quickly, which is what I did in my early 20s. Let's start with a breakdown of that £100,000 salary. That is £67,803 per year or £5,650 per month. Now, in this video, we're going to speak about earning £100,000 in the major cities in the UK, such as London and Manchester, and how your life would differ earning £100,000 in these places. However, to give a rounded picture, I will also touch on, if you were to live outside of these major cities, what your life could be like and whether earning £100,000 is enough. Okay, firstly, rent. This one-bedroom flat in a good part of London situated close to all major monuments is on rent for £2,500 plus bills. Bills are an additional £500 on this property, taking the total amount to £3,000 per month. In other major cities across the UK, such as Manchester and Birmingham, a similar sized flat located close to the city centre is £1,700, including bills. And this is what your apartment would look like, a one-bed, fully furnished apartment with an on-site gym, etc. Next, we'll consider travel, and travel is notoriously expensive in the United Kingdom. In fact, even by living close to the city centre, your travel is likely to be around £20 per day, or £60 per week, or £240 per month. So, let's add this to both totals. Moving on is general living expenses such as groceries, which have risen significantly since Brexit and then the pandemic. And to make matters worse, the Financial Times are reporting that some supermarkets are charging more than costs have actually risen. Other sources have reported that the average grocery shop spend costs £80 per week, and this can be even higher as people are now looking to buy as much fresh food as possible. According to other sources, grocery shop spend in the UK is now at £80 per person per week, or £320 per month. So again, let's add this to the total. Moving on to your subscriptions, such as Amazon, Netflix, Spotify, gym memberships, mobile phone contracts. These are now getting expensive. In fact, CNBC in the US reported that the average person now has over $200 in subscriptions, which is equivalent to £170 per month. So let's add these to the total. Finally, we move on to the category of wants as opposed to needs. And this category is extremely important as it is often downplayed by many people who say you don't need to spend on that holiday or buy those clothes. However, in our 20s and 30s, we want to be able to spend on some luxury. So I think it's a very important category to include. But the service industry is one of the areas that have become very expensive since the pandemic and you are now likely to spend around £80 on a night out in major cities across the UK. If you go out twice a week, that is £160 or £640 per month. And then we move on to things like holidays, which according to travelpark.co.uk, Gen Z travel an average of three times per year and spend an average of £1,500 per trip. This is £4,500 per year or £375 per month. Okay, so that should cover most people's general expenses, so let's tally them up. Rent is £3,000 per month or £1,700 if you live in cities outside of London, £240 on travel, £320 on groceries, £170 on subscriptions, £640 on going out, buying clothes, etc. And holidays are £375 per month. 
that's a total of £4,745 in London. If we take our 100k salary of £5,640, this leaves you with a total of £895, which is actually not that much considering that you're earning over £100,000. Now, you can save on things like rent, however, we have picked a central location. So, saving £895 per month will give you savings of £10,740 per year. Now, the average property price in London is around £500,000, and for this, you would need around £80,000 saved, so it will take you a good few years to get on the property ladder. If we look at other major cities, then the total expense falls significantly to 3,445, which means that you can save well over 2,000 pounds per month. Property prices in these other cities are around 40% less, and therefore you would only require a deposit of around 50,000 pounds. Thus, you'd be able to get onto the property ladder in about two years. That is a big difference. So, earning £100,000 in London may not actually suffice to live a lifestyle that the Gen Z generation want to live. However, by moving to other major cities such as Manchester or Birmingham, it certainly does allow that. And moving out of these major cities means that you can save even more. Before we move on to my golden tips on how to reach that £100,000 salary as quickly as possible, can I please ask a small favour? If you could like and subscribe, it really helps the channel grow and allows me to make more content like this. Thank you. Okay, so two tips on how to excel in your career and get to that 100k salary as quickly as possible. Number one is understanding your industry. Let's say you finished university with an economics degree. What jobs are available to me with an economics degree? Which ones pay the most? Which ones are the most exciting? And which one has the most potential for career growth? All of that information is available online and I use just two websites, LinkedIn and Glassdoor. Let's take an example. This is a current open role at Bloomberg where they are looking for a product manager. Straight away, by typing in product manager at Bloomberg in Glassdoor, we can see that they pay between 100 and 150,000 pounds for this type of role. Next, you will need to understand the job requirement and make a simple list of skills that you already have versus what you don't have. This is where LinkedIn comes into play. You may have experience in project management or agile, but may not understand the coding language Python. Once you have looked at 30 to 50 similar job specs, you will start to see synergies in what skills are required. You can then start to learn these over the next 12 months in order to give yourself the best chance on landing the job. Consistency is key here. The second tip is the two year rule. Every two years, you should look to achieve a 15% pay rise. To do this, you need to make it clear when you start working that you are here for career growth and you need to understand what steps are involved in achieving that promotion. Once you understand the steps involved, you can make a plan around that and start working towards those goals. Even if at the end of the two years you don't get that promotion, you would have gained a number of skills to get a similar promotion elsewhere. You will be very surprised at how quickly you can excel in your career if you stick to a plan. Thank you very much for watching this video. I really hoped you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. If you agree or disagree, it doesn't matter. Let me know and thank you very much.